The apostles couldn't fathom what Jesus was teaching. This was a quote that Dan Cummings shared last week in his reflection. What I would like to do today is to pick up on his reflection, Dan's reflection, and that quote that Dan shared, also a quote from Thomas Merton. The apostles couldn't fathom what Jesus was teaching. Today, I'd like to offer two teachable moments. The first is, what are we entering into with regards to Holy Week? How does it have meaning for us as Catholics? And secondly, what should our internal disposition be as we enter into Holy Week? And so first, what is Holy Week? Holy Week is the culmination of Lent. For us, it is the last push of preparation as we ready ourselves for the Easter celebration. On Palm Sunday, we recognize the return of Jesus in a glorious way to Jerusalem, a triumphant return. On Holy Thursday, we recognize that Jesus calls together his apostles and disciples, those people that he brought with him in his public ministry. On Holy Thursday, Jesus shares this last supper with those that he loved. And after sharing that meal, Jesus washes the feet of all those that are there. For us as Catholics, this is a commemoration of the institution of priesthood and the Eucharist. It is implicitly and explicitly reminding us that the two can never be separated. Love is expressed in the service of others. Love is expressed in the service of others. On Good Friday, we commemorate the crucifixion and death of Jesus. We take this symbol, the symbol of the cross, a scandalous symbol of criminality, and we transform it into the symbol of our own salvation. And then on the Easter Vigil, we recommit ourselves to that which we believe as Catholic Christians. We understand that who we are as a people of faith calls us to recommit ourselves to the promise of what it means to be a person of faith, a disciple. But even more than that, on the Easter Vigil, we bring into our midst those people who have been walking through with us this Lent during the RCIA process. These individuals have chosen to be a part of our parishes, our churches, our communities of faith. For us, on the Easter Vigil and on Easter Sunday, it's not simply a recognition of reaching a weekend, but more importantly, it's an acknowledgement that mercy will always conquer revenge, that life will always conquer death, and that light will always conquer the darkness. It is a call to action, not of a day, but of a way of life. This is the what of Holy Week. I'd also like to share something else, and that is what should our attitude be as we enter into this most sacred time? What should our internal disposition be? And to do that, I'd like to share a story of a great woman, Sister Celestine. Sister Celestine is in her 90s. She's living at the villa. She's having a difficult time now, and she might be nearing the end of her own life. As we tape this today, I would ask that you continue to pray for Sister Celestine, for the magnificent witness that she is to so many people. Sister Celestine has been a sister of St. Francis for over 75 years, 75 years. Several years ago, I had the privilege of taking Sister Celestine and Sister Marcia and Sister Bernadette, three sisters that were stationed at St. Mary's in Baldensville. During that road trip that we took to St. Bonaventure, Sister Celestine sat in the uh, front with me. It was a long day and on the way back, I think all of us wanted to just get home. As we're driving home, I didn't realize that I was speeding and a state trooper pulled me over. As the state trooper pulled me over, he walks up to the car and he leans over and he says, Father, do you know how fast you were going? And I didn't respond, but as soon as the trooper asked that question, do you know how fast you were going? Sister Celestine spoke up and said, 82, he's going 82. Now, I gotta tell you, that brutal honesty was an expensive lesson for me not only in terms of the speeding ticket, but also a call to mind of being safe in the car. 
It also relayed for me something that was really special and is very special about Sister Celestine. She is a woman that is unbelievably honest, but she's also a woman in her witness that allows everyone who comes into her midst to be themselves, to simply acknowledge that they are who they are before her. In many ways, it reminds us of that great quote from Paul's letter to the Corinthians, that we are what we are by God's grace, and God's grace towards us has not been in vain. It's this attitude, this charism that Sister Celestine has that I would challenge all of us to embrace as we encounter Holy Week. I think for us, so many times in our lives, we pretend that everything's okay. And the reality is that we do not need to pretend. We don't need to pretend that our life is perfect. We don't need to pretend that all our relationships are wonderful. We don't need to pretend that we're not anxious and fearful and lonely. As we enter this most sacred of weeks, we simply need to be our broken selves, to understand that our God knows us for who we are. We must be who we are to that God. My brothers and sisters, as we bid farewell to this Lent and embrace this Easter celebration, let us remind ourselves that we need not pretend. Because when we pretend, it is that much more difficult for our God to abide, to grace, and to save us. Being who we are is God's gift to us. Acknowledging God's presence before us is our gift to God.